I'm David Lenwobo, an engineer on the Shazam Kit team. Shazam Kit is a framework that allows you to bring audio recognition to your apps. You can match audio against Shazam's vast music catalog or match against your own pre recorded audio using custom catalogs. 2022 saw some great updates to Shazam Kit, which improved working with custom catalogs at scale. There was the introduction of the Shazam CLI to handle heavy workflow when using custom catalogs, time-restricted media items for better syncing, and frequency skewing to differentiate between two similar sounding bits of audio. If you're not already familiar with how these work, check out the Create Custom Catalogs at Scale with Shazam Kit video. But to give a quick overview, Shazam Kit lets you perform a match by converting audio into a special format called signatures. You can pass in a stream of audio buffers or the signature data into a Shazam Kit session. The session then uses the signature to find the match in the Shazam catalog or a custom catalog. If there's a match, the session returns a match object with media items that represents the metadata of the match. You can then display the media items in your app. Shazam Kit can perform a match by generating a signature from a stream of audio buffers or using a signature file which can be stored on disk. Signatures are irreversible, which means it is not possible to reconstruct the original recording from a signature. This protects the privacy of our customers. A catalog is a group of signatures with their associated media items and a match occurs when a query signature sufficiently matches part of a reference signature in a catalog. Matches can occur even when the query signature is noisy, such as music playing in a restaurant. Now that I've covered that, I'll move on to the exciting new updates in Shazam Kit this year. In this session, I'll go through new changes for recognizing audio with Shazam Kit. Then, I'll talk about the Shazam Library API, which has been redefined with exciting new functionality. Finally, I'll take you through some best practices for creating better app experiences with Shazam Kit. Before I get started, I suggest you download the attached sample code project on the developer portal. I will be making use of this project throughout this video. There's a lot to cover, so I'll get started. First off, audio recognition. The process of using Shazam Kit to recognize audio from the microphone can be summarized in the following steps. First, ask for microphone permissions from the user. Then, start recording after permissions have been granted. Next, pass in the recorded audio buffers to Shazam Kit. And finally, handle the result. To demonstrate this, I've built a demo app which you can find in the sample project. I love dancing, and to keep up with the latest trends, I built an app to help me discover trending dance moves to a song. The app works by listening to audio using the microphone and proceeds to find a dance video. So for example, I can ask Siri to help me find a song. Hey Siri, play Push It by Dukes. Now playing Push It by Dukes. Then I can tap the Learn the Dance button to start recording. Shazam Kit recognizes the song and the app searches for an appropriate dance video to go with it. Seems like I got one. Hmm, looks like my twin dancing Dave is showing me some moves. This looks exciting. So, how was this implemented? Let me take you through the code. Here, I have the sample project opened in Xcode. I have added a microphone usage description in my info.plist file, which is used to request microphone access. I also have a host of SwiftUI views for the home screen and the dance video screen. However, this matcher class is where all the magic of audio recognition happens. On initialization, I have a method to configure and set up the audio engine. In this method, I install a tab to receive PCM buffers and prepare the audio engine. Also, I have a match method, which is called when I tap on the Lend the Dance button. I request for recording permission, 
And if this is granted, a call starts on the audio engine to begin recording. Next, I tell my UI matching has started. Then I call session.results and wait for an async sequence of match results. After receiving a result, I set the match object if it was a match, and I handle the no match and error cases. This class also has a stop recording function in which I stop the audio engine. This works great, but notice how I have a lot of setup code to configure the audio engine before I can receive audio buffers. This can be challenging to get right, especially if you aren't familiar with audio programming. And so, to make recording and matching easier, we've introduced a new API called SH Manage Session. Manage Session automatically takes care of starting the recording for you without the hassle of setting up audio buffers. This makes it very easy to set up and use. Microphone permission is required to use Manage Session. Without this permission, the session cannot start recording. Therefore, it is important you add the microphone usage description entry to the info.plist file of your app. Manage session will use this description when asking for microphone access from the user. So, how can I use this API in code? First, I'll create an instance of SH Manage session. Then, I can wait on a result by calling the result method. This method returns an enum which has three states that can either be a match, no match, or an error. Next, I can switch over the results using the return media items in the case of a match and handling the no match and error cases. And what if I want to have a longer recording session that can return many results over time? Well, I can do this by using the async sequence result property on manage session. I can use each result that's received from the sequence just as before. This ensures I can keep recording audio for long periods. Finally, I can stop matching by calling cancel on manage session. This cancels any currently running match attempt and stops recording. And that's it. With Manage Session, it's just a few lines of code to start recording and receive a result after matching. Going back to my app, I'm going to update the matcher implementation to use Manage Session. I can replace all instances of SH Session with SH Manage Session. Then I can delete the configure audio engine method and its usage. And in the match method, I can delete the calls to request recording permission and to start the audio engine. Finally, in the stop recording method, I can replace the existing code to stop the audio engine with just a call to manage sessions cancel method. Now, I'll run the app to make sure everything is still working as expected. Hey Siri. Play Push It by Dukes. Here's Push It by Dukes. Exciting. Everything is still working fine, but this time the code is even better and cleaner with Manage Session. That's not all. There's even more to Manage Session to talk about. Depending on your use case, you may want Manage Session to prepare for a match attempt ahead of time. Preparing a managed session makes the session more responsive when matching. It also pre-allocates the necessary resources needed for a match, and it starts pre-recording in anticipation of a match attempt. To give you an idea of the benefits of using prepare, here's a timeline representing the behavior of the session without calling prepare. When you ask for a result, the session allocates the resources for the match attempt, then starts recording. Finally, it returns a match. However, when you call prepare, the session immediately pre-allocates the resources and starts pre-recording. Then, when you ask for a result, the session returns a match faster than before. To do this in code, 
I can simply call the prepare method before I ask for a result. Calling this method is entirely up to you, and Shazam Kit will call it on your behalf if necessary. Now, you might be wondering, how do I track the current behavior of the session? For example, in a long-running session, how do I know it's recording, or matching, or doing something else? To help with this, Manage Session has a property called State, which represents the current state of the session. The three states are idle, pre-recording, and matching. In the idle state, the session is neither recording nor making a match attempt. This is the case if the session just completed a single match attempt, or you call cancel, or the session terminates the async sequence of results when carrying out multiple matches. Pre-recording represents the state after the session has been prepared. In this state, all the necessary resources for matching are ready, and the session is pre-recording for a match attempt. You can then proceed with matching or cancel pre-recording. Matching is the third possible state, which indicates the session is making at least one match attempt. Calling prepare in this state will be ignored by the session. Here's an example of how the manage session state could be used in SwiftUI to drive view behavior. Here, I have the sample implementation of a subview from the demo app. I have implemented different behaviors for this view if the state is idle or matching. Currently, the state of the session is idle and the text view is set to hear music. Also, I have a conditional that checks if the state is matching or not. If it is, I display progress view. And if it's not, I display the Learn the Dance button. Since the state is currently idle, the Learn the Dance button is displayed. When I tap on the button, the state changes to matching and my UI automatically refreshes. This time, the text is set to matching and the progress view replaces the button since matching has commenced. Whenever the state of the session changes, SwiftUI will automatically refresh your views to respond to those changes without any extra work. And this is because Manage Session conforms to Observable, which is a new Swift type that makes objects automatically communicate their changes to observers. Therefore, SwiftUI can easily respond to any state changes of Manage Session. To learn more about Observable, check out the Discover Observation of SwiftUI video. Now that I've covered audio recognition, I'll talk about the Shazam library. In 2021, Shazam Kit provided an API to allow developers write a match result to the Shazam library, provided it has a valid Shazam ID. This means that it corresponds to a song in the Shazam catalog. The added item is visible in the Control Center Music Recognition module and the Shazam app if installed. It is also synced across devices. There is no special permission required to write to the Shazam library, but I recommend you avoid storing content in it without making customers aware, as all songs saved in the library will be attributed to the app that added them. Here, the second song in the list is attributed to the Shazam Kids Dance Finder app. Over the years, usage of this API presented different use cases and led to some drawbacks. For example, what if you wanted to view items you've added in your own app? The go-to solution would be managing your own local storage, which can be tedious to handle and prone to bugs. Because of these drawbacks, a new class has been introduced called SH Library. I recommend adopting SH Library as it offers more extensive features compared to the previous SH Media Library class. Some of the core features of SH Library include adding media items to the Shazam library, which works the same way as the corresponding method in SH Media Library, reading media items, and deleting media items from the library. Note that your app can only read and delete what it has added to the library. 
Items returned when you read are specific to your app and do not represent the entire library. Also, attempting to delete a media item your app hasn't added will throw an error. Next, I'm going to explain how to use SH Library. Adding with SH Library is as simple as calling the add items method of the default library object. This method takes in an array of media items to be added. Reading from the library is equally simple. As an example, here's how you can read items from the library and populate a list view in SwiftUI. You simply pass in the items property of the library object into the list initializer. SH library also conforms to the new Swift observable type. Therefore, your Swift UI views will automatically reload when there's a change. You can also read from the library in a non-UI context. For example, if I want to retrieve the most popular genre of a user from their sync shazams, I can ask for the current items of the library. Then, once I have this, I can filter through the array of items to get all the return genres and count the genre with the highest frequency. Finally, I can remove items from the library by calling remove items on the library object, passing in the array of media items to be removed. Going back to my app, since I've added recognized songs to my library, I can use the new SH library to read these songs. In the recent dances view, I have a list which contains an empty array of media items in the initializer. I'll replace the empty array with items from message library to automatically read my library items. I'll run the app with these changes. As soon as the app loads, I receive a list of songs which the app has added to the Shazam library. With SH library, I get this functionality for free and I don't need to maintain a database of matched songs. Next up, I'll add a swipe to delete action on each row so I can delete a song from the library. I can add a swipe action on the row view. Then, when the swipe button is tapped, I can call the remove items method of SH library, passing in the media item that is to be deleted. Now that's done, I'll run the app with these changes. I've got the app open on my iPad as well. I can swipe on an item on my iPhone and tap the delete button. The changes are synced and the deleted item is also removed from the list on the iPad. This is amazing. Now that you've learned how to use the new library APIs and how you can make use of Manage Session to handle recording, I'll take you through some best practices and offer some tips when using some of the new features introduced this year. SH Manage Session and SH Session are closely related. They can achieve almost the same thing, albeit in different ways. Use Manage Session when you want to let Shazam Kit handle the recording for you. Use SH Session when you are generating the audio buffers and passing them into the framework. Use Manage Session to recognize audio coming from the microphone or an AirPod. Use SH Session when you want to only recognize audio streaming from the microphone. Matching arbitrary signatures with Manage Session is not supported. Therefore, if you have a signature file or loaded signature data in memory, use SH Session to match it. Finally, Manage Session automatically handles audio formats for the matching, while SH Session allows matching with multiple PCM audio formats. Speaking of audio formats in SH Session, previously, the Match Trimming Buffer method only allowed matching PCM audio buffers with specific format settings at these sample rates. Audio buffers with unsupported settings resulted in a no match. With this release, SH Session now supports PCM buffers with most format settings sampled at a range of rates. You can pass in these buffers, and SH Session will handle the format conversion for you. Finally, if you have two or more bits of audio that sound similar in a custom catalog, Shazam Kit can now return all the matches 
from the custom catalog when you pass in a query signature that matches multiple reference signatures. The matches are returned, sorted by the best match quality, and you can filter for the appropriate match results you want. As a tip, properly annotate the reference signatures that sound similar in their respective metadata, so you can distinguish between which result you want. Here's an example of how you can achieve this. Say I have a television show where every episode has the same intro sound. I can generate a television show catalog with reference signatures representing each episode. I can create a session using this catalog, and when matching the intro section, Shazam Kit will return a match result with media items of each episode. I can then filter through the media items and only return media items for a particular episode, say, episode 2, for example. This is how proper annotation helps. Now that I've gone through all the exciting updates this year, I'll conclude by switching back to my wonderful app and attempt to learn one more dance. I'll switch to my AirPods and play a song. Since I am using Manage Session in the app, it can listen to the audio playing in the AirPod and find the dance video for me. I'm going to press on the touch control of my AirPods to play a song and wait for the app to detect the audio. Sweet! Looks like Dancing Dave is showing off a couple of Afrobeat moves, which I'll try my best to learn after this talk. I hope you're as excited as we are with this new update. Thank you for joining, and have a great WWDC.